Hi guys, so you can see the first thing I did when I got my Army Painter Speed Paint and that was to paint the lids, just so I can see exactly how it looks, uh, well, when I paint it on the miniatures. And whilst it does work, it is a little bit sort of plain and boring looking, so I thought I'd mix things up and make these. And these are custom all paint lid swatches. Uh, yeah, a pretty cool looking I think. And definitely so much more fun to look at than just, well, normal lids. And the fact you can make whatever kind of sort of lid you want, uh, it's just awesome. So I'm going to go through how I made these and, well, how you can get hold of, of them yourselves. So this video is actually sponsored by Revopoint, and as you can see, they sent me this lovely 3D scanner. Um, yeah, it's something I've kind of wanted for a while now. Obviously, I am 3D printing for about the last two years. Uh, and I thought being able to sort of scan in your own things to then print out just sounds really, really awesome. So yeah, good, nice little simple setup this really. Uh, it's quite compact, uh, very nice looking. Obviously, it comes with a little tripod, so that just attaches nice and easy. And it also comes with a little turntable, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, you do get a little sort of <laughs> miniature thing in this, just as a sort of like a tester to have a go at scanning. Um, but obviously with this scanner, you can scan, well, whatever you want really. Um, I mean, if you wanted to, not that you should do, because obviously uh, it's against Warhammer's IP and all the rest of it. Um, so yes, I'm not saying you should scan in Warhammer figures, guys. I'm just saying it's a possibility, nudge nudge, wink wink, all that sort of stuff. Um, but obviously in this case, it's these. This is what I want to scan in. I want to make my own lids. Um, and yeah, make some fun lids. So that's exactly what I'm going to have a go at scanning here. So one thing I do need to mention here, guys, this is my first time ever using a 3D scanner. So this video is in no way a sort of like a how-to. This is just a, this is how I've had a go at using one uh, and my experience of it. So yeah, if you want to go sort of find out how to use 3D scanners, I would highly suggest, uh, well, looking on YouTube for people who know what they're doing. Um, yeah, so I'm just a guy having fun, messing about, trying new things out. Um, and yeah. So my initial thing was to obviously scan the, uh, the was basically the inside of the lid is what I want. Uh, just because obviously I want to scan the inside of the lid to make sure that whatever I make will then sort of fit onto the bottles. So again, it's all a bit of a learning curve. Um, I was trying to scan the inside. Uh, having a few issues though. So first time ever using the scanner, so it was a case of trial and error. Um, and the one problem it does seem to have is shade, shadows. Uh, I have watched a few videos on how to use one of these. And the main thing everyone says is it doesn't scan black. So there's obviously shadows caused inside the other uh, lid. And that's why there's a large area that, uh, yeah, it purely isn't scanning. So I tried and tried and tried um, a variety of things, moving the camera, different positions, getting it further, higher above it, below it. But none of them seemed to work. Um, so yeah, so then I had a bit of a change of plan. So rather than scan the inside of the lid, um, yeah, it kind of then made more sense to scan the outside of the lid as well. As you can see, there shouldn't really be any shadows caused on this. Um, so yeah, so I gave that a go. But I also had a few issues with that, and the main thing for that was um, it's quite shiny. So again, bit of a learning curve. It doesn't sort of scan in black areas and shiny things. It doesn't do. So I thought I'd have a go at sort of doing my matte black because it is a, a nice matte. Uh, but say black doesn't go in, even if it is a nice matte black. So then I did a, a grey primer, um, and yeah, definitely more better results with this. So again, it is a case of trial error, trying new things. Uh, and just sort of adapting and changing as we go. It's like the speed as well. This thing, uh, this little turntable, has got a controllable speed to it, which is really awesome. So I turned mine right down. Um, just because this captures like frames per second. So the slower this is going, the more frames, um, and yeah, the better the thing will look. I have speeded some of this footage up now, though, guys. Um, I'm because I did have this thing turn in very, very slow. Um, but yeah, great results from that. And then there's a whole variety of options on how you can sort of improve the image and what you've got. Again, big learning curve, and I'm definitely not showing you how this should be done. As I say, this was my first attempt at doing this. Um, although I, I was, did get very excited, the fact that I can, or you can, scan things in. Um, and, and then, yeah, then go and print things out. And I've been using and absolutely love 3D printers for the last two years. So now to have a device that can actually scan things in... Um, to then print out is just, yeah, I really am like a kid in a toy shop. It's just absolutely amazing. So I took the file, saved it, uh, and imported it into Tinkercad. 
again, this is where my skills in, well, I'm not even going to call it 3D modelling. Uh, but yeah, using 3D items, my skills are very lacking. Um, again, big learning curve. So Tinkercad, nice and free, nice and easy. Quite limited to what you can actually do. But for me, it's, it's great because you can add things and take things away. So as you can see, I've got my, uh, my little sort of bottle cap lid thingy. Um, and I've got a nice round cylindrical item. Uh, my, my sort of plan here was just to test just how well this thing had scanned in. So I want to make like a, a plain sort of lid. So simple case of making a sort of tube, uh, putting it over my little cutout. Because the other thing in Tinkercad, you can make things as a solid item or you can make them sort of like as a, as a whole. Um, and that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to use my sort of scanned in item to take away from the... Uh, the and then that leaves the thread inside, uh, yeah, my sort of plain tube. So again, this was just a little test, just to make sure um, it did fit the, the bottles. So obviously the last thing you want is to make one of these, put it on a bottle, and it to be loose, and, well, your paint dry out. So yeah, simple case of obviously removing the, uh, the old lid. Um, and yeah, trying this out and seeing just how well it fitted. And yeah, pleasantly surprised and very happy that it was a lovely snug fit. Meaning that the thing I scanned in did work, and I could use that as a cutout, um, well, for whatever I really want to. So that's why I say these these lids are very customizable, because you can basically make whatever lid you want, because all you got to do is use this little um, little STL cutout that I've now got, um, and yeah, it will then fit onto well, onto these bottles, which is just awesome. So yeah, guys, um, I will be putting this file as an STL over on my Patreon page. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave links, or I'm gonna put the um, this little Batman figure and some other figures there as well. But I'm also gonna put obviously the uh, the threaded inside bit, um, just so you can make whatever you want. And it is just a simple case of getting figures or whatever it is you want, making sure it's not obviously too big, but big enough that you can put the uh, the threaded bit on the inside. And he says this is a case of grouping them together. Uh, when you group them together. It does the hole and it takes that hole out of well the item that you're uh, you're putting it on and it really is that simple and I say that's why these are so customizable because well if I can do this anyone can I say Tinkercad it's a free software uh, just to download it and yeah very simple um, again most things look on YouTube and you'll see lots of people there showing you exactly how to use this in a much better way than uh, than I could. Um, but yeah, there you go. So the thread is now sort of cut out into my little uh, little fat Batman, uh, Buddha man. Uh, and yeah, so rather than just using the plain little thing here, I've now got this lovely little chunky guy, which I'm sure is modelled on me. Um, and yeah, I think he's so cool. So I was almost tempted to print out 50 of these and change all my bottles. Um, but the thing is though, yeah, it, obviously it'll take quite a while. So that's why I was just having a bit of a mess about doing a few just to see how they looked. And then, yeah, it's simply a case of just painting it. So with this one, obviously, as you can see, I've painted it white. All the bottles in the background, I've done them as a slap chop. So the bottle lids were primed in black, dry brush grey, dry brush white, um, and then the paint's put on, mainly because, obviously, that's how I do most of my painting with miniatures. Um, but for this little test, I just fancied painting him just plain white and, and then seeing how he comes out. And again, this is why it is worth doing this, because as you can see on the other uh, bottle, um, it looks more of a brown than this should be, but on the miniature, it's come out looking, well, almost orangey. So again, this is why whatever sort of primer you would normally use for your miniatures, that's what you want to use on these sort of bottle lid swatches. Um, just so you can see exactly what, <laughs> what it is and what it looks like, which is just cool. Uh, and yeah, so these files, um, I got these from Thingiverse. Again, most things I like to get are from Thingiverse. And one of the main reasons for that is they all come under, or you have to check which ones they are, uh, but yeah, they come under the Creative Commons license, which basically means you can then take them, adapt them, change them, do what you want with them, um, and then yeah, in many cases, you can then go on and sell them. So yeah, that's why I like Thingiverse, just to get sort of a rough sort of thing to use, and then I amend them and change them. So again, all the, uh, the STL files for these four miniatures are on my Patreon page, as well as the basic... Um, sort of cut out to use to make your own. I just want to say a big thank you to Revopoint for sponsoring this uh, this video and obviously sending me their lovely 3D scanner. So there's a link down below guys, go and check them out. Um, yeah, these things are absolutely amazing. I say, relatively easy to use, it is a learning curve um, and I will be scanning more things in. 
So definitely keep an eye out, guys, for other sort of things I'm going to scan in. Um, and I think one of them is definitely going to be my head, as I really fancy making myself into a space marine. So yeah, keep an eye out for that one. And there we get, guys. If you want to become a patron, um, obviously it helps support the channel and means I can continue making videos. But you also get access to, say, a lot of the uh, the STL files and bits and pieces that I am making. They are all there to download. Uh, as well as every Monday I do a video sort of showing what I'm going to be working on that week. Um, as well as occasional pictures and videos of updates of, yeah, of things I am sort of working on. Honestly, a big thank you to those of you who are already a patron. Thanks so much. Uh, as well as Chaos Cards for helping uh, support the channel. There's another video on the, uh, the screen, guys. Give that a click, see more of what I do. And if you are new here, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. You guys all take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.